It's a new year and training is always in season. Check out whose winter break was filled with weight rooms. Only six months left till summer and you can never be too prepared. And if football teams are preaching that preparation builds champions, well, what do past champions preach? A special sports desk guest breaks it down right here in the studio. Plus, the boys of Torrance High take a trip to the city, a chance to play on the same court as Kobe, the same rim Blake dunks on, and watch from the same courtside seats as Jack. The sports desk is back and it starts right now. Hey there, Torrance. Happy New Year. Welcome to our first show of the year here on the Sports Desk. I'm your host, Juan Hernandez, and I'm not going to bore you with New Year's resolutions, but we will jump into this week's show and the new year by talking about starting off the new year with a bang. For the boys of Torrance High, that's been a bit difficult in past years when they've had the opportunity to play on the same floor as the Lakers and the Clippers at the Staples Center. But as our Valerie Ortega found out, something about 2014 feels just a little different. The Torrance Tartars started the new year off in a South Bay showdown against the Miracosta Mustangs. And they did it in a huge way, playing this tough matchup at the iconic Staples Center here in Los Angeles. Oh man, it's tough. There's nothing like it. I mean, with the big backdrop and, the, and just the whole, the whole spacing, it's really, it's really different. It's no, there's no way to really prep for it. Uh, just the locker rooms, the, the atmosphere. I was, it was deciding to play out here. It's like, kind of cool. Miracosta was favored to win with a record of 12-1 going into this matchup, but the Tartars were the ones to step up to the occasion with a huge second half. The kids got fired up. I mean, I talked to them about how close we were in this game and how we only needed a couple more stops and just to do a few, tweak a few things defensively um, and then look for a cute few keys on offensively what we're trying to do. Um, and really, it opened up the floor for us. The guys started getting some confidence and we just started riding our momentum. It was great. It was exciting. He just said, just go out there and... <laughs> Do it as all you can, and we pulled it out, and it was just amazing. He just told us, you know, we're right there. Keep playing hard, and keep it. And we had to attack the rim better, and it paid off in the second half. With 9.9 .9 seconds left in the fourth quarter, Torrance was up by only one point. After making a much-needed free throw and then getting a stop, Torrance put away Maricosta in an exciting win. But our guys really just their character, their will. We uh, we pulled this one out. It was not an easy task, but we did it by committee. It's the greatest feeling, man. Uh, it's one of the best wins of our year, and just excited. And the kids are just working so hard. They're prepared, um, and uh, they just. I'm really I'm really proud. I mean, in the locker room, I, I even got a little teary eyed, emotional, just how proud I am of this team. It was a physical game between the Tartars and Mustangs until the very last minute. In the end, Torrance came out with the upset, and there was no better place to do it than on a big stage like the Staples Center. From Los Angeles, this is Valerie Ortega reporting for the Sports Desk. Thanks for that, Valerie. So you'll remember just a couple weeks ago, the Tartars were on a bit of an early season roll. Looks like the Tartars really are a new squad under Coach Paul Nataki this year. They matched their 2012-2013 win total over winter break alone, going 5-3 and three since we last saw you here, including that win over Costa. Meanwhile, the girls of Torrance High also doing their thing this winter. Great things about winter sports is there's so many preseason tourneys, so many non-league games before everything starts counting that the season itself just manages to feel fresh and new well into the final weeks before the league games. So, back to Valerie Ortega one more time as she previews the ladies of Torrance High. It's a new basketball season at Torrance High School with a lot of new players joining this Tartar team. We're like really young this year, so we're still trying to get a hang of things. But I barely came back too, so I'm still trying to like get involved with the team and like try to get, create the chemistry still. But I think we're doing pretty well. And being on varsity is a new experience for a lot of these players. Typical being very nervous, not wanting to step on toes, and we, we keep telling them, Go ahead, step on toes, you know, you're up on varsity for a reason, so now it's time to step up and play. With only five returning players, Coach Rick is looking to his captains to help lead this team. Oh, I depend on them a lot. I've been, ever since summer, we've been talking to them, telling them that they have to be the leaders and show them the way, and they've been doing a good job. I try to push them, like make them hustle. Um, and just talk to them about how what to expect for season, you know. Try to get them mentally prepared, physically prepared, 
push them during practice and all that good stuff, yeah. Last year, the girls' basketball team here at Torrance had a winning record, including going 6-4 and four in league and making it to the quarterfinals in the playoffs. This year, the Tartars have a young team. They graduated nine seniors last year, but they still look to make another great run this season. I still think we can get to the quarters. It's just getting us all comfortable with each other. Hopefully, we can do pretty well during season, get pretty far, probably back to the quarterfinals in uh, CIF. Um, I just hope that we just play hard the whole season, you know, never give up. I think that the new players coming in this year have like a lot to add to the team, so I think that we have a really good chance of going the same as or just as far as last year. From Torrance, this is Valerie Ortega reporting for the Sports Desk. And just like the boys in the downtown classic, the girls at Torrance come away from Staples with a W. 49 to 37 makes Torrance high, two of two in their downtown classic appearance kicking off the new year in style. Okay, time for our first break of the day. When we come back, the Sports Desk Studio gets a little crowded. We've got a special guest coming in to talk shop on all things soccer, along with sharing a few words of wisdom for today's squads chasing after that CIF championship ring. If I ride, I will know the way the trees smell after the rain. I will grow a heart so strong that hospitals will take Tuesdays off. If I ride uphill, I will eventually get to ride downhill. That's how it works. If I ride, my breath will fill the air instead of smoke and car exhaust. If I ride, road rage will turn into laughter. And I won't be a boy or a girl. I will just be a rider. If I ride, I will be strong. Every day, thousands of people suffer from sudden cardiac arrest. Would you know how to help? Or would they be all alone? Learn what to do at heartrescuenow.com. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Sports Desk and as promised, I told you we'd have a special someone joining us today. You'll recognize her from the show. Many of you know her from running around the sidelines covering South High Sports on the sports desk, but if we will rewind a little bit, she also used to lace them up for the Spartans back in the day before earning All South honors at East Carolina University. She's back in the South Bay now. Haley Outen here to talk soccer, and Haley, word on the streets is you were lacing them up pretty recently, yeah? I did, Juan, this weekend. I was invited back to my alma mater for the annual alumni game. It's easy to feel like your old self those first five minutes back on the pitch, but after that, retirement legs kick in pretty quick. We all know this saying, if I knew then what I know now. It's pretty cliche, but now that I've hung up those cleats, it's safe to say getting back in the game has a whole new perspective. You live and you learn. Usually I can forget the alumni game once it's over, but this year I had a couple of lessons to bring back for today's prep athletes. It's a little tougher to hide mistakes when you're mic'd up. Don't hold it against me, but check it out. It doesn't seem like long ago that I was walking the Spartan campus as a senior and proud member of the girls' soccer team. Tradition was something always embedded in our minds, and the 13 seniors of the 2009 class wanted to leave our legacy before heading separate ways to embark on the journey of life. Not many even make it to that CIF championship, and even fewer leave with a ring. But me? I was lucky enough to do both with my friends and teammates by my side. Some of my fondest memories were created on the South High soccer team. That is why each year we look forward to getting back together in the alumni game. No, we may not be the fastest or the fittest or even sometimes remember how to play, but we still have the same amount of fun and a lot of laughs that make it all worth it. It's a long road to a championship, but what I learned along the way is far better than the ring itself. And that's why I want to share my six most memorable takeaways from the game that are not only important on the field, but in a way, also play a role in day-to-day -day life. So let's start off with number one. When you're on the field, every teammate is your friend. 
You will do anything and everything to help them and have their back to reach a common goal. Number two, to be good at your sport, you have to be healthy and fit. Well, unless you're an alumni. I am not going to catch you. <laughs> Number three, you don't remember the wins and the losses so much, more so the tears of sadness or the joy of laughter that you share as a team on the bus ride home. Number four, you get what you give. No matter what sport, you get out of it what you put in. If you want to be the best, you have to train the hardest. Number five, overcoming adversity is part of the game. If you aren't willing to go through the hard times, then you don't deserve to be on the field for the life-changing moments. Last, but definitely not least, number six. It's not always the most talented team or player that wins. Having the most heart oftentimes prevails. And that, Torrance, will wrap up what I think are the six key philosophies that keep me coming back to the game. Somehow the alumni ended up pulling off a 2-1 win that night, but I think the varsity team may have been taking a little easy on us. So let me get this straight. All <laughs> conference honors in college, and you still managed to get smoked by somebody running down the sideline? Pretty weird, right? It's amazing what one year off the field will do to you. Just one year off the Just field, you're already year. getting old. Already. That's not good. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of the Spartans, they seem to have a pretty talented squad once again. They are heading into the Pioneer League ranked sixth in the CIF Southern Section Division IV poll. There was a lot of uncertainty heading into this season after losing 15 seniors last year and bringing on a brand new coach. But what didn't help matters was losing key forward Kaylin Camerly to a leg injury early on. But sometimes when a team loses a key player, it can turn into an opportunity for someone to step up and carry some of the workload. That someone this season has been freshman Claire Grauwinkel. Coach Liz Kitsios pulled her up from JV and it's a good thing she did. Grauwinkel scored 10 goals in the Spartans' last eight matches. Not too bad. The Spartans looking to continue their streak of CIF semifinal runs. They've made six straight CIF semifinal appearances and of course will be circling back to see if they can get past that hump later this season. So speaking of playoffs, last year both of these squads make deep playoff runs and I think obviously the storyline, the question is can they both do it again this year? Yeah, well, and I think they can. Well, out of all the teams in Torrance, definitely think collectively the Spartans have the best teams when it comes to both programs. The girls historically have always done really well, but the boys team was the pleasant surprise last year. Halfway through this season, they were under 500, which is never good, but then something apparently clicked and they found themselves going even farther than the girls team and ended up losing a close one in the CIF finals. They aren't starting off as slow this year, but it definitely seems like they are still figuring out a few things. Who's to say they won't make a playoff run again? They were perfect. They were a perfect example of getting hot at the right time. Okay, so overall the South Soccer program going to have a bullseye on their back. We know that in the Pioneer League, um, but there's got to be some teams in Torrance, of course, that can maybe give them some fits. Yeah, definitely. I think there's one team that could really cause the Spartans some problems, the Torrance Tartars. Torrance soccer is definitely a threat this year and is ranked just two spots ahead of the Spartans in the CIF Division IV poll at number four. Alicia Sloss has been on fire in the attack with a team leading nine goals. However, probably the biggest threat on that Tartar squad is midfielder Annika Rodriguez, who is also a member of the women's U-17 national team. Pretty cool stuff. The Spartans and the Tartars haven't met yet this year, but will have to face each other twice come league, which, if history is repeating itself in the Pioneer League, those two matches will decide who wins the league title in 2014. El Segundo could also be a team in the Pioneer League that causes some upsets, but right now it looks like it's a showdown between Torrance and South once again. Okay, so we've covered a little bit now about the Pioneer League, but moving on to the Bay League, West is also a school, has two really good teams, both the boys and the girls, but you seem to think that they're just really up against some stiff competition no matter how good they are. Yeah, well, it's going to be tough for West. It's no secret the Bay League is stacked with some strong squads. Top to bottom, they're one of the more competitive leagues in Southern California, and that goes for boys and girls. The West boys did lose the Eaton Bryant Cup for the first time since the turn of the century, just last month. Bodes well for the Spartans' confidence, but it also says even as good as West is, they're going to have to step things up against the Bay League. Right now, they're sitting in the middle of the pack as we work through the preseason. As for the girls, they also have an uphill battle against some really strong programs, but they're coming off a huge winter break. Winning the San Pedro Lady Pirate Cup, a little local matchup there, they took down Bishop Montgomery on their way to that tourney win. Things really turn up next week. They're going to be opening up Bailey competition against Miracosta and then PV. So basically their first two games are against the popular picks to take the Bailey crown this season. 
All right, well there it is. Thank you for the tour through Torrance Soccer. Appreciate it, and obviously glad to hear you made it out of the alumni game alive. Uh, next year I'll pull some strings, make sure we have some oxygen waiting for you on the sidelines. Yeah, I'll, make, okay? I'll make sure you're out there with me, right? I definitely will not be on the <laughs> sidelines at that game. All right, that is gonna take us to one more break now on the day. This time, we'll be coming back to a hoops duo making the Thompson name stand out around the South Bay. Meet two brothers with a little hesitation and telling us who's got the better jump shot. found every hazard out here today? Think again. The spot you missed could be a killer. That spot on your skin could be skin cancer. Fact is, if you're a man over 50, you're in a group most likely to develop skin cancer, including melanoma, the kind that kills one person every hour. One in five Americans is likely to develop a form of skin cancer during their lifetime. That's why your best shot is to check for a spot. It's easy. Follow through and check your skin. It could be the save of a lifetime. Go to spotskincancer.org to find out how. A message from the American Academy of Dermatology. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Sports Desk. It's our final stretch through the first show of the year. And you know, in Juan's world, it's never too early to talk football. Never. We may have just said goodbye to the BCS, finally, and in the NFL, well, they're finally playing for keeps. But in the prep world, we've said goodbye to the Friday Night Lights on the gridiron for over a month now. It may be a little cliche, but champions are made in the offseason, which is why while I'm playing Madden, one crew doesn't care that two-a-days are over six months away. Well, they're hitting the weight rooms now. Professional athletes aren't the only ones who take advantage of an athletic offseason. I caught up with the high school quarterback to find out how he likes to spend his free time. A few weeks ago I was in track running with, the, with my coach just to get faster and then I thought about just I needed to get stronger because I knew that speed was always going to come with me. So I came back to the weight room with the football and started getting stronger ever since I left track. Weight training isn't the only thing on his mind. He constantly reminds himself about the unexpected shutout loss that ended their postseason run. Honestly, yeah, it's the last game that when we played Bishop Dago, remember that score, 34-0. That, that sits in my head, like, that's motivating me, and I know it's motivating some of the captains and the returners on this team. And we both, we all know, actually, we know what it takes to get back to where we were when we went to CAF two years ago. When you have the long season that we had the year before, it was tougher for us to get in the weight room right after because you know our season just ended right before that Christmas break. So, so this year, the disappointing early exit and uh, the kids right away are motivated to come in here and, and get going and change the mentality that we had the year before. The goal of every athlete is to improve over the course of the off season. Right here in this room is where most players train to enhance their strength, agility, and speed. Let's go, BK. I'm very dedicated working out in here, and then it shows on the field to like scouts, recruiters, just to see me and just to perform the way I do. The versatile player will have the exact same role as last year. It's not going to just be him. We've got a, a group of guys that uh, we expect a lot out of, and uh, you know, being a leader in the weight room is going to give give him more practice at that. And, and oh, he's only a sophomore, but you know, coming into his junior year, we're we're going to rely on him heavily as we have this last season. And he hopes all the hard work, dedication, and commitment in the weight room pays off on the football field. Ever since season has ended and the way our coach has like changed things around, I I feel like 
I can't like I just can't wait for next season. Like it's already showing like the way we're working out as a team, just getting ready for next season. You can really see the difference during the season. Uh, it'll it'll be very good for preventing injuries, and you just you can tell the difference between a guy who's put the time in, has taken it seriously, and been committed, and the guy who hasn't. So last year we were a little bit uh, shaky in the weight room, and I think this year the guys have turned it around immediately. And the countdown begins. Only 33 more weeks until we're kicking off on a Friday night. It's going to blow right by us, I promise. Now, if you're impatient, no worries. We've still got plenty going on in winter sports now. That's going to bring us back to the hardwood where two young men are, are hitting the court this season with a bond just a little bit stronger than what they share with the rest of their teammates. We've talked plenty today about winning championships, about sharing the accomplishments with your teammates, and athletes always talk about teams being a brotherhood or treating each other like family. So our Reina Ale heads out to Bishop Montgomery to learn a little more about what that's all like when you really are talking about playing with your actual brother. Bishop Montgomery has a new set of brothers on the basketball team. No, it's not the Cravens, but the Thompson brothers, Stephen and Ethan Thompson. We both started, we started playing together like on travel teams and like uh, park teams and little school teams and like when we would go work out my dad would always like take us both and we would both work out together. Um, I started wanting to play basketball around like three and when well that would be my brother would be five so we started playing at the Y and then we went to the Gardena League together and we played there for like three years. Stephen and Ethan's dad, Stephen Thompson Sr., was quite the athlete himself. He introduced basketball to his boys as early as five years old and became a big reason of why they love this game. Well, my dad was always a hard worker and I think I've gotten that trait from him. And he's always is pushing me to get better because I know he wants the best for me. From his experience, he taught me like to work hard. Like While some other people are probably not working as hard as you, you could be working harder and gain an advantage. Steven and Ethan are relatively close in age, only 26 months apart and they're both shooting guards. You would think they're pretty competitive with each other, especially on the court, but that's not the case with these brothers. These two don't seem to have the big issue with sibling rivalry. Stevie's been really supportive of his little brother, and I think he's really proud of him. Um, like the Craven twins, I had to be careful. I couldn't even put them in drills against each other because they'd kill each other, but uh, these two I don't see this. Maybe there's an age difference, so I don't see it as much with these two. He's a very unselfish player. He's a good teammate. Uh, it's fun playing with him, and he's, he's good, so it's fun playing with him. There's a good player on the basketball court, and he's very funny off the court and always makes me laugh. Steven and Ethan are looking towards leading their team to another successful season, regardless of any negative talk. We're looking to like win, win, uh, play, do as good as we can. Uh, a lot of people think we're not as good as last year. We're trying to prove them wrong. From Torrance, this is Reina Ale reporting for the Sports Desk. All right, any other duos we can feature around town, you're always welcome to give us a heads up here at the Sports Desk. We're still online, and no, our email didn't change over the new year. The Sports Desk at torrentsca.gov, or just a quick Facebook search will do as well. The Sports Desk TV to keep plugged in to all things going on in Torrance's world of sports the entire week. Okay, everybody, that wraps up our first show of the year right here in the studio. Happy 2014.